Hi. <clears throat> so today, uh, I wanted to show you um, a really cute little egg timer kit from uh, Teresa Salgato. And uh, she sent it to me. That's from tinypandora.com. And said, uh, see what you can do with it. So um, I've seen a few examples. And she's made a wonderful video, which I'll leave a link to. Um, so that uh, when you get your kit, you can uh, have a look at it. It comes with uh, with the uh, egg timer, which is glass and is bakeable, and uh, four little posts, and uh, and then you just follow her video or follow my video. Uh, I'm gonna wing it. I I really hate winging things because uh, I I like to sort of work work it out, but. Um, Anyways, I, I've gone ahead and I've made my bottom piece and I'm thinking a little bit romantic. I may add some clay roses to it and I'll show you how to do the roses. And um, I'm using a, a um, seamless cutter. And the size of the bottom doesn't really matter that much. You can make them longer. Um, you know, you just want to have a good idea um for for your spacing and they both have to be the same the top and the bottom so i use the cutter that is uh, about just two and just a little over two and a half by two and a half yeah just two and <laughs> slightly over it's an odd size but um like i say it doesn't really matter you're just going to do two of them the same and I started with some white Primo clay and done on the thickest setting of my uh, pasta machine. And I'm going to go with four layers so that I got a good thick, um, thick amount. So I'll just make sure there's no air bubbles in there and stack up four layers. And then to color it, I'm going to use my pan pastels. And I've got a, a Lisa Pelvelka's, um, it's called tooled leather, one of her uh, texture, texture mats. And I'm going to put a little water on it, just a little spray, and put it down. And then start applying a fair bit of pressure. So just kind of walk your fingers from top to bottom. If you roll it, it'll probably move. So you're probably better off not to roll it and just press as much as you can. It'd be good if you stood up and were directly over top of it. But we'll see how good I can go just from the side. That's not too, too bad. Okay, so I'll dry that off. And then I'll use my cutter to cut, cut my piece. Sorry about that, moving the camera. That's a lot of clay to go through. So I'll just clean up those edges a little bit. And I'm going to put uh, a layer of textured clay on it after it's baked to give me a nice finished edge. OK, 
Okay, so now I'm going to uh, get my pen pastels out and just lightly color it. So I got my tray of pan pastels <clears throat> and uh, I'm just going to choose a light color to start with. <clears throat> um, the color choices are really up to you. I'm not going to name out the colors because uh, it's going to depend on what you have. And you don't have to use pan pastels. You can use anything to color it. Uh, if you're doing it, in, uh, you could use maybe mica powders or ink of gold or any of those type of things. So start with a little bit of yellow and then kind of a minty green. And a little blue. And I just really love pan pastels. I like how they layer. And then I'll put a little turquoise in there. And then maybe a tiny bit of an ochre color. And that's plenty. So to clean your your S O F F S O F F T soft applicator, you just wipe it on a paper towel or that's a dry baby wipe. Okay, so now the uh, the sticks, <clears throat> the way I put them in was I went corner, uh, to corner to corner, and uh, so that I had a bit of a triangle here. If I'd gone this way, uh, it would have probably given me too uh, narrow uh, a section on the, on the corner. Sure, you want those corners to be strong. So I went that way, and... Uh, and just did all four of them, making sure that I had a hole that went all the way through. And to cut the hole, I found, I don't know if you guys have seen this uh, 39 set uh, piece set that you can buy on eBay or Amazon. And they're, uh, uh, I believe they're for leather, cutting leather. And uh, there's a little tiny, uh, it's probably about a quarter inch. Uh, where's that? Let's see here. Yeah, about a quarter, about a quarter inch square cutter, and it is the perfect size to cut these holes. But, um, anyways, to uh, to make sure that they match, because you're going to want to make sure they match. So I have one here that's baked already, and the other one's not. And I'm going to use one of these sticks through it to mark those same spots. And then you can you can always um, when it's baked just take a knife and open up those holes if they're not quite big enough. So then I can use my cutter now and just press straight down. And pull it out.
I'm going to use my knife and just kind of clean it out a little bit because the, the cutter didn't seem to get it square right, right throughout. So I'll just clean that out a bit. That side looks good. And then the sides are going to be covered after it's baked. And uh, so for the uh, the sticks, what I did, um, and there's lots of things I could do, I, I took a strip of, um, of white uh, done on the number three setting, which is a medium thin setting on my pasta machine, and uh, wrapped it around the stick. So let's just get this out of the way. I'll clean that up a little bit better before it gets in the oven. Put that over there. So I've got a medium thin sheet of white here and I need a piece. Let's just get an edge. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this through the machine on a number four and make it even thinner. Okay, that feels a bit better. So when you determine how much um, clay you want in here, you want to make sure that you have enough to go through your hole and extend a little bit past, um, which you're going to cover up with some little feet. And obviously, if you get it too big, it's it's not hard to trim it up after it's baked. This one's been baked. So I'll take just a little bit off of there. There's the better edge. Okay, so measure it. Give me an idea. And I want it about there. And I'm going to put a little bit of, of uh, okay, that's the clear. I want just regular translucent liquid Sculpey. So I'm going to put just a little coating of the translucent liquid, uh, translucent liquid Sculpey on the stick. You could use white glue, it works just as well. Something like Well Bond or even um, any white glue will, will do the job. These sticks, when I bake the bottom piece of the, uh, uh, of the uh, hourglass or uh, three minute timer, I guess it is, um, I stuck the sticks in the oven too, so they've been pre-baked. I don't know if it's really necessary, but... Then you don't have to worry about it expanding. Okay, so I'll just put my, my stick here. And maybe we'll trim that just a little bit more. Helps if you use a sharp party blade. <clears throat> there, that's better. Okay, put the stick on there. So you want to get this on fairly snug and you don't want air bubbles in it. 
So it's a little bit of a trick getting it on. But I, I found it easier to wrap it this way than to put four separate stra uh, strips. Um, this way I only have to worry about one seam and uh, just worked out better for me. So now this is going to grow on the stick. It's going to get bigger than than where you cut it, so it's going to have to be trimmed after. So there's my one seam. So I'll take a little bit of time now to smooth that out. This is where it grows, <laughs> but it's kind of crucial to do this because you don't want to uh, you don't want to trap any air, and this is going to help you get that air out. Plus, it'll thin it out a little bit, which is good. Okay, that's way longer than it should be, but I'll trim it after. So what I'm going to do now, again, I'm going to spritz it. This is one of the um, uh, little border maker tools. I forget exactly what they're called, but Sculpey makes them. And uh, I'm using the leaf design, which is I love. So I get a little spray of water. <clears throat> and I'm just going to run it. Trying to center it. And give it a little turn. Put it down on a piece of paper now so it doesn't stick to the glass and distort the pattern. And that's that. And then we'll trim it to size again. And then I'll color it with the pan pastels. So using the same colors. And it doesn't take very much. Just lightly go over the surface. And I'll use a little green. And I wanted the sides to be a little greener than the bottom, so I'll stick some real green into there. And a touch of turquoise. Whoa, that's a lot of turquoise. So that's basically it. So I'm going to do two more of those to have my four of them. And uh, then I'll bake the bottom pieces with the uh, supports. And I'll be back when that's done and uh, we'll keep assembling. Oh, there's one big thing I forgot to do. I 
Okay. <clears throat> One of the most important things of all. Uh, you need a, a place to put your uh, your hourglass. So that should have been done probably before I pan pastelled it. But oh well. So it's going to look a little different than the other piece. So uh, I'll put it on a piece of paper here so I can spin it around and make sure that I'm centered. And then I'm very carefully press it in. It, it's glass, um, but it's not really, really thick. So you just you just need a place for it to sort of sit. Yeah, that would have been a lot better if I had waited. <laughs> this is why I hate winging things. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's not too bad. So you could use uh, like a ball tool or something too and just kind of press it in a bit more. I want that to sit down in there pretty good. Okay, so that part and the uh, supports are going to get baked and I'll be back and then we can embellish it and, uh, and I'll show you how to make some little roses to decorate it with. So I'll be back. So while the bottom uh, or top piece is baking in the oven, I'm preparing a Skinner blend for uh, to make some roses and uh, I'm going to leave a link to um, a Russian um, girl, uh, Rusalina, that makes the most amazing roses and uh, so I, I followed her, her videos, although the ones I'm going to make are not nearly as big as hers, but um, she does a wonderful job. So I just wanted to show you one of the roses that I made following her tutorial. So this one's got like many layers of uh, of petals and the ones I'm going to make are just going to have about th three separate layers. So um, one thing I tried when I did that rose was uh, Sculpey Mold Maker. Um, somebody had said that putting a little bit of it um, makes things a little more pliable, a little stronger. So um, they didn't tell any proportions and I'll tell you it's it's pretty important. Um, you don't need a lot. So you know possibly a little piece like that would be would be enough in a um, pieces this big and uh, it's maybe a little bit less for the smaller piece. That's that's probably enough. Um, I did try it one time where I had been quite generous with it and it made the clay so soft it, it wouldn't even go through the pasta machine. It just sticked and rippled and uh, did all those things that sticky hot clay does. So um, on the other hand if you want really sticky clay, if you wanted to do the napkin transfer that might be a good thing to put in your clay. It'll make it sticky, that's for sure. But anyways, uh, it's less is more on that. So uh, I'll go, I'll um, mix these in and then roll them in um, Cindy Leakes' uh, teardrop uh, Skinner Blend method. And I'll be back with my, when my Skinner Blend is finished. Okay, here's my Skinner Blend. Um, I'm just going to fold it and then stretch it out. And I just cut it in half to make it a little bit more manageable. It's 
So I'll go make a long strip with that. Okay, so I ran it through the passer machine on uh, all the way up to a five. So a two, three, four, and then five. And now I'm just going to accordion pleat it. Yeah, I'll get rid of that little bit of dirty bit. So that's just folding it back and forth. Trying to make sure that just squeeze out all the air bubbles. So this clay is still really soft. So <laughs> if you're using the mold maker, a um, little bit, just a little bit will do it. And I'm not quite sure why I chose to do kind of a chartreuse and green colored rose, but it just seemed like a good idea at the time. I may not use all of this green. I only want just a little bit of it. That's good. Okay, so now we'll just compact it a bit. stretch it out and I'm going to turn it into a round so I'm, I'm pinching those edges until it gets round once you get it round you could start to roll it some just drop off these ends. I got a little distorted and this side as well. And I'm going to cut this in half basically. And one end I'm going to roll with the uh, the white on the bottom. So orient it so that I have the white all the way at the bottom.
and this is really hot so after you do this you're gonna to have to let it sit and rest for a bit or put it in the fridge or something like that because it'll just be mush to work with but uh, I don't know if you can see that so I have the color on the outside of this petal and the white on the inside this has to be cut a little bit there you go and the other one I'm gonna do the opposite so I'm gonna pinch the green end and that just gives you a different variety of of, uh, of colored petals that which some of them you might want uh, dark on the outside or light on the outside Now, I'm not a real expert at making roses. I don't think I've made enough of them yet. Somehow I think you've got to make like hundreds of them before you get really, really good at it. But I love making them. They're fun. So that one has the green on the, at the tip. So I'm going to let this cool down because I won't be able to use it the way it is and uh, and then we'll make make some roses here are some that I've done previously so you can see some of them had the white on the outside and the yellow on the inside uh, some of them I did this one's not baked yet <laughs> had the green on the outside um, some of them I did kind of a mixture of the two so um, once that's cooled down we'll make some roses Okay, so I got a couple of these pieces chilled and uh, I'm ready to make a rose. You're going to need uh, a large ball tool. This is a sculpy one, but something of that nature and just your hand. So I'm going to cut uh, for, like I say, a full size. Uh, well, it's not a full size. It's a pretty small rose, but uh, one for the center. Uh, three to go around it and then five to go around that so and how thick you cut them is going to determine the size of your rows so that's pretty thick save that for the outer petals these are probably too big but Okay, I'll cut six just in case I think I need another one, but usually I go with five. So I'm going to start with one fairly big one uh, for the center. And I just squish it a little bit, flatten it out in your hand, and then take your um, ball tool and just stick it in your palm of your hand and sort of press it out. I leave it a little bit thicker by the base of it and thinner around the petals or the tips of the petals I mean okay so that's one we'll do another one And if you turn that rose over, the uh, creepiness of your hand makes a really pretty texture. So you can use either side. I guess the older you get, the more creepy you are. So these roses, um, they won't take a lot of wear and tear. Um, so I'm going to make them thin. If it was on a brooch or something like that, you, you might be, you might want to go a little thicker because brooches take a lot of abuse. 
but on a decorative item like this, it'll be fine to go nice and thin. So that really blends out the, uh, the Skinner blend quite pretty. So I'm only going to make one rose, really, if you're interested in making roses. Um, there are a lot of uh, tutorials on YouTube that are quite excellent. So when I showed the rose that I did following uh, Rusalina's uh, tutorial, I totally didn't get it in uh, in camera. So I'll, I'll show you again real quick. That's uh, that's the rose. So it had the the center layer um, three going around it, and then five going around the next layer, and then six going around the next layer, and then eight going around the final layer which made quite a large full-blown rose so that it's about three inches in diameter. Anyways, let's make this rose. So I just got a little scrap piece from the, uh, the end. And I'll just bring it to a point. Take one of the petals. and give it that curl for the center of the rose. And then I'll take another petal. And I'm only pressing down one side. I want to leave the other side open for now, but I'll press down one side and just ruffle it a bit. Take another petal. And it overlaps the side that you press down. And you can bring that around. You can press both sides of this piece and just fold it back a bit. This one I want to leave open. And I'll take one more. So it overlaps the last one. And then the first one. So tuck that in. The first one overlaps that one. And again, I'll just ruffle those edges. Bend them back a little bit. Make them sort of look a little bit wavy. And then I'll put the second layer on. So I'm going to overlap a, a couple of the uh, petals. Again, I'm going to leave one end open, the far end, the side that I'm not working with. And I'll get another petal, overlaps it slightly. And another petal. And 
this row is going to have five. One more petal. And then the last one. Pull back that first one. This one overlaps there. It gets tucked in. And the first petal will overlap it. And just kind of ruffle it somewhat and then slice it off. And then that can be placed on the uh, on the uh, hourglass or minute glass. So I, I'm not going to show all of them. That's basically what I do. If I'm going to make little uh, buds, it's going to have just the one center one and three that goes around. And uh, I'll be back when they're all done and we'll assemble this.